Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Tuesday episode of Running Point, brought to you by Greenwood Chevrolet in Austin Town. And as you can see, according to a, a contrary to our theme song, we are not on our own. We have uh, Bernard Scott, the head coach of the Urson Girls Basketball Program, joining us from the top of the show. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Coach, I know you're getting your feet a little bit wet with the program yourself, but there's no doubt the program coming off of a, a winning season last year and a very tough schedule. Um, talk to me a little bit about some of the players that you're excited to bring on to this roster in particular for this team and some of the new players that you think might get some playing minutes if they uh, keep working hard. Yeah, you know what? They had a um, really good season last year. They had four, four seniors that were uh, very good for the program, did a lot of good things. Uh, for the team so we're trying to um you know keep the winning seasons going but we also know it's a different team um, a different group of girls and um right now uh returning we have uh, my daughter lily scott as a sophomore guard and then um our junior elena smith um returning those two will probably be uh, some of our more experienced players Uh, and then we have meredith gray who, who played a little bit of varsity last year as a freshman. Um, Trinity Lamb, who pr- played um, a little bit before having to sit out because she transferred in last year. Uh, so we – and Chelsea Johnson, who was actually uh, a freshman last year, played on the JV team, but uh, will be playing varsity this year and good athlete. And then as far as freshmen go, we, we got four freshmen that I think – can can come in and give us good minutes at that varsity level. One being Nia Bernie, um, whose brother also plays for the, our football team, who's a pretty good football player. Uh, we have um, a young lady named Katie who came from the Canfield area, who's doing really well for us, a strong post player. Um, Carmen Boyd um, is another one. And then a young lady named Marina, who uh, comes from the St. Charles um, Middle School and She's a guard that can help us as well. So looking forward to working with all the young ladies um, and looking forward to getting going. And like we said, you know, it is your first year with the program and, and you're replacing a very well-respected coach in, in uh, Coach Kernan, who has moved on to coaching uh, college softball. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of things do you kind of want to implement yourself and, and, and personalities and culture for the, that you want to implement to this program now that you're taking it over? Yeah, you know, Co- Coach Kernan did a good job. Um, we we have different styles, I, I think. Uh, for me, we want to get up and down the floor a little bit. Uh, we're going to use a lot of ball screen action. I think um, basketball is really going to that that type of style of play, and that's, um, that's how we're going to play. But we also want to be a team that competes on the defensive end. We want to be uh, tough defensively. We want to make it hard for teams to score and hopefully give us easy opportunities offensively. And then we just want to be a team that's together, a team that works hard every time we're out there. And uh, when we leave the game, we want to know that we left everything we had on the floor. Coach, and I mean, I, I have to agree with you. I think that uh, basketball is turning into a lot more of, of screens, off-ball screens especially, is becoming a huge thing, especially in the high school level. Talk to me, though, when you have such a young team and you talk to me about a lot of the freshmen, sophomores, is that kind of easier to kind of uh, try to implement a new game plan when you kind of have a fresh crop yourself with uh, with the team? You know what? You can teach them, uh, you can teach them the way you want, um, want them to learn since they're fresh and new. But it's it's a little harder because the IQs aren't um, probably where some of the seniors IQs were last year. So you got to the learning process is a little slower at times. But the the one thing I like about these young ladies is that is that they're willing to learn. They're um, willing to be coached. And I think as long as that's the case, um, every practice, we will continue to get better and they continue to learn. You know, with every new coach, you're not you're not you need to you have to get get the upperclassmen to kind of buy into what you're doing, so so it, it will trickle down to lower. So, what kind of conversations have you had with your seniors and your juniors and the upperclassmen to try to get them to to really buy into your culture? And, and how are those conversations going? Well, the conversations I've had with all of the young ladies is that 
in order for us to be the team we're trying to be, we got to have total buy-in. And that's not just on the basketball court, but that's also off the court. That's getting the places on time. That's making sure you have your gear and you're ready to go when it's time to go. Um, just going through those little things that are really big things. And um, so far it's been good. We, we're still a work in progress with some things, but I think they understand that we have a high standard, that I have a high standard for them, and I'm not bringing that standard down to, uh, to meet, meet where they're at right now. They got to come up and meet that standard for us to be the program that I know we can be. We know the Steel Valley Conference doesn't really provide a whole lot in the way of the schedule, so a lot of non-conference games have to uh, have to be scheduled typically. So talk to me a little bit about when we're looking at the schedule, how you think the schedule is going to help prepare this uh, team uh, come tournament time. I think it's a good schedule. You know, like you said, it's, it's, it's a lot of non-conference games, but um, the teams we're playing are quality teams, well-coached teams. So we're going to be challenged. Um, by the time we get to the tournament, we should have seen every style of play from the teams that we're playing. So we should be well prepared for anything that, that comes up. And um, I think by the end of the season, we'll definitely be better than we are right now. So, and that's the plan, you know, we want to continue to get better each day and each time out and, just see improvement and hopefully by March we can make a little run. You know, Coach, you're you're a big name in the girls basketball community. You know, I saw you at the women's game last night. A lot of people knew who you were. Uh, what's it like? What's it mean to you to be such a big part of this community of girls basketball? And then what's it mean to you to see the growth of the sport in the last you know five, ten years that we've seen, especially in this area? Oh, it means a lot. You know, um, I'm just happy to be back and be a part of it. Part, a part of helping um, improve the game, but it, it definitely means a lot that a lot more people are taking interest into the women's basketball game. And, uh, you know, these young ladies deserve the same support that the, the boys get. And that's, that's what I'm trying to push. That's what I pushed when I was in college. You know, there's no reason they should be treated any less than, than what the boy, the way the boys are treated. So um, every time out, I'm trying to prepare them to, um, you know, basically stand up for themselves and also just know that they belong. And I think over the past five years, we've seen a, a turn in support for the girls um, basketball programs. And I think that's important. We've seen so many different stories of how coaches got to where they were in coaching basketball, whether that be this wasn't even the original sport they were coaching or it kind of fell into them or this is something they've always wanted to do. You kind of seem like you always have that basketball mind, though, just talking to you shortly here. So it feels like that's always been sort of a love. What kind of gave you the love and where did you start uh, really realizing you had this passion for basketball and wanting to start coaching it? Yeah, this all this all started when I was in fourth grade. I've always loved the game. I started playing in fourth grade, and from there, it's just been a part of my life ever since. And when I got to college and and played in college, I knew um, you know the NBA wasn't in my future, and I, overseas wasn't in my future. So the next thing for me was to be a coach. And you know, I, I thank Coach Elin, Mark Elin, who was at Toledo at the time when I got into coaching um that he he allowed me to come on staff and that's where it all started at Toledo and I've been quite a few places um since but every every place I've been I've learned from some very good coaches and from co-workers and you know being a head coach at um at Detroit Mercy I was able to learn on the job there as well so you know, I've always been a basketball junkie. You know, I was at the game last night. Uh, I was at Oakland uh, versus Niagara game on Friday. I, I just I love basketball. I love women's basketball. And um, I just love learning as well. Coach, when you, you, you've you coached at every level, you know, you, you, you're on staff in Toledo, like you said, you've coached at Detroit Mercy. What do you think is special about coaching at this level with the high school kids and getting a, being able to, to grow them, not just as players, but also being able to grow them as human beings too? Well, I think for me, it's just being able to bring the knowledge that I have to um, put them ahead of the ball game. Um, I think what I'm giving our players is 
probably a little more than some other programs are, are getting uh, with my with my knowledge and where I've been. So I know we have some young ladies that want to play at college, whether it's basketball, softball, volleyball. I can help them prepare for that with the how to how to approach that, how to carry yourself, how hard you got to go in practice. Uh, so that's that's the type of stuff I'm trying to bring to our program. Yeah, we want we definitely want to win games. We definitely want them to improve as basketball players. But I also want to prepare them for for life outside of basketball and moving on and moving on if that's what they want to do. I think there's no doubt that your resume speaks for itself and what you've done with just the sport in of itself. But looking at it, I, this is always a question I like to ask, especially players that, that had a, a nice little run with uh, with the sport. What would Coach Scott tell player Scott if, uh, if you can have the chance to after all the learning that you've said you've done over the course of the years? Man, I, I wish I knew <laughs> what I know now as a player. Um, you know, when you're when you're young, you feel like you know it all. You feel like you're you're good enough. Um, what I would tell the the young coach Scott is, um, you know, work a little harder out there on on things that um, you weren't good at. You know, a lot of us like to work on the things that we're good at. You know, I probably I like shooting the ball. I spent a lot of time shooting the ball. Well, I probably could have worked a little more on ball handling or something. I don't know. But um, the knowledge I have now, I wish I had when I was younger because it, it would have took it would have took me a long way. Coach, we got to talk about this snazzy locker room that you've been showing off <laughs> on, on social media. It looks great. It's yeah. it's a it's a locker room that we were talking off there that there are some smaller colleges that probably wish they had a locker room that looked that good. Uh, what's it mean to this program to have a place like that where the girls can you know, relax when they want to, be able to watch film together and, and do all these things that are going to be an advantage to your program that you guys have and a lot of other teams don't? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's a good advantage for us, a great resource. Um, like you said, the young ladies can – Go down there and relax. We got a nice couch area down there. The TV is nice. We actually just watched film down there the other day. Um, it's a it's a place where they can go and just hang out, which is what you want your players to do. And you know, as you mentioned, there's some some colleges that probably um, don't have locker rooms as nice as we have at the high school level. But um, you know, we're well supported here. Um, Ursula cares a lot about their student athletes. And that's just another example of just trying to get them the best experience they can have here. Talking about that support, we know every coaching staff is huge for uh, the support that that they bring the head coach to. So we want to give you the shout, uh, the chance to shout out some of your assistants, coach, as well as some of the other big proponents that are uh, huge into the Ursuline program. Yeah, you know, we have Coach Doc, who was with the program last year. I kept the assistants on staff from last year. Um, they did a really good job, Coach Doc being one of them. He's a really good basketball mind, um, sees the game on both ends of the court, which is which is nice for me to have. And then Coach Bree, she does a great job. She's actually going to be coaching our JV team, and also um, she, she relates with the girls very well. So having those two on staff right now, we're still probably going to bring in one more person. Um, but those guys have been a big help. They've really bought into what I'm trying to get the girls to do. And we're all on the same page. And I think that's very important on any level that um, your staff, your coworkers are all on the same page um, in order for you to be successful. Coach, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to join us today. I know a lot of people in the Earthling, Earthling community are very excited that you have this job, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys succeed this year, covering you guys all season, and we'll talk to you again real soon. I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. Thank you, Coach.